So question number one, give two characteristics of debt. So for each question we have some time limit, right? So from the next question on I'll set the clock so you can have some time limit to answer the question. What is debt? How could we explain what debt is? What are two characteristics we have of with debt? Debt. Right? Two characteristics of debt. Okay, so we have team, so if you don't finish one answer. One person can keep looking for the answer. The other people can move on. Okay? So question two. How can we estimate the cost of debt for a company if the firm is rated? So how can we estimate the cost of debt for a com company if the firm is rated? So we have a big company like Coca Cola, they have a rating. So, how can we? If we know their rating, how do we calculate the cost of debt? You need to write down an equation, right? Three times. What do we use? Again, we can leave somebody looking for that answer and move on with the rest of the team. Question number three. Bookscape has an operating income of 3575 and an interest expense of 575 What is its interest coverage ratio? Thank you. 
Back in your notes, how do we calculate the interest coverage ratio? Then make the calculation. Okay, the next question. Uh, what is the after tax cost of debt for Tata Chemicals? So we're looking for the after tax cost of debt, number four. Giving the following pieces of information risk free rate, country default spread for India. Default spread for the company, so the company must be rated B, it has a high default spread, right? And the Indian tax rate. So given this data, calculate the after tax cost of debt for Tata Chemicals. Need more time? Do I need to change the timer to one and a half minutes? Hmm? Just like to give a few extra seconds every time. So you just need to put the numbers into the equation and make the calculation. Cost of capital for Disney, given the following information. So calculating the cost of capital. Their cost of equity is 8%. Their after-tax cost of debt is 4%. Market value of debt is 20 billion. Market value of equity is 50 billion. So if we know this information, then we need to calculate the cost of capital. Okay? We know the cost of equity, we know the cost of debt, we know how much equity we have, we know how much debt we have. We should be able to calculate using weighted average. Okay? So. Basically, we have 20 of 4% and we have 50 of 8%, right? So what is the weighted average of that?
Okay, so question six. How can we get from accounting earnings to cash flows? So, especially in the past, we use accounting earnings. The accountants use accounting earnings. So, what's different between using accounting earnings and cash flow? When we want to change from accounting earnings to cash flow, what do we need to do? We can write down an equation that we can use, or just we can write down in English. What do we need to add or subtract to the accounting earnings to make the cash flow? People on your team can work on question six and the other ones can look at question seven. Give an example of an investment or a project. So just give an example of an investment or a project. companies use depreciation? What's the main benefit? <clears throat> depreciation is not a cash flow, it's just an accounting trick. Why do companies use this accounting trick? Go back over the question. 
check all your questions and write the answers, right? Then we have to check the answer. So go check back over the question with your group. Do they agree with your answer? Write that on one page. You're going to give the page to another team. We're going to look at the correct answers. And your, the other team is going to correct your page. And then we'll write your score here. Okay, so let's check again your team A, team B, write your team number on the top of the page, right? Team B, team C here, team D, team E there, team F here, team G here, <coughs> team H here, team I here, team J back here. Team at the back there is Team K, Team L, Team M, and Team A. If you're one team, just Team M. So write your team name at the top of your page and give the page to another team. They're going to correct your answers and tell me your score. Okay? Do you have your answers written down on your team name? then give it to this team, right? You guys need to give them your page. Okay? So let's take 10 seconds to give the page to another team. If you haven't given it 10 seconds, then too late, you get zero points. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So give your page to another team. Five, four, I can only see one team swapping. Do you understand? Give your page to another team. Do you understand? Three, two, one, zero. Time up. Okay, give your page to another team. We're going to start correcting. Ready? Let's start correcting. Question number one. Give two characteristics of debt. Commitments to make a fixed payment. We make a fixed payment every month. Okay? Uh, the fixed payments is tax deductible. We can get some tax advantage. If we don't, this is the main point of debt. If people don't pay us back the fixed payment, like interest, you can say that we pay interest every month. You don't have to take a picture because it's on the, it's on the website. Uh, it's going to lead, you lose control of the company. Okay? If you don't pay back the money, you lose control of the company. That's what happens when you get a loan, right? So if the answer is like making interest payments every month, that's okay, right? Or if, if the company uh, doesn't pay the money, we own the company, then that's okay too. Okay? You don't have to write in exactly the same way. You can write in your own English. If you have a question you're not sure about whether the other team answered correctly or not, you can ask me. Okay, question two. How can we estimate the cost of debt? If the firm is rating, we use the rating to find the default spread. Okay? Key here is we find the default spread from the rating. Then we add the default spread to the risk-free rate. Okay, we can. We have to. Everything starts not from zero in finance. Everything starts from the risk-free rate. Okay, because we can invest our money in U.S. government bonds and get two two percent a year. So we're not going to start from zero. Okay, default spread is added to the risk-free rate. Number three. So the calculation. The interest coverage ratio is the EBIT over the interest expense. In this case, the ratio is 6.22. Okay. Uh, number four. Pre-tax cost of debt is equal to the risk-free rate plus the country default spread plus the company default spread. That's 8.5%. After-tax cost of debt equals pre-tax cost of debt multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. So the answer is 5.61%. <sighs> Number 5. 
first thing we need to do is debt over debt plus equity. Okay, in the way we find out debt over debt plus equity is 28.5%. So therefore, equity over debt plus equity is 71.5%. Okay, to make 100. So we multiply our cost of equity by our amount of equity. 71% of our company is equity. And we, our equity is 8%. 28% of our company is debt, and our debt is 4%. Okay? So the answer we're going to get is 5.72 plus 1.14, 6.86%. You can give half a point if, if they got half right. Maybe they did the equation correctly, just made a small mistake. To get from accounting earnings to cash flows, we add back non-cash expenses like depreciation. So add back depreciation, subtract capital expenditures, okay, and consider changes in working capital. So we have to think about depreciation, capital expenditures, and working capital. Okay, there are the three main differences. Number seven, there are a lot of examples you could give, right? Any decision to enter a new market or business, acquiring another firm, making a new venture, changing the way a project is run, how to deliver a service. If you wrote down Disneyland in Brazil, that's correct too, right? That's an example of a project, okay? Or an investment. Number eight, very simply tax. Benefit of depreciation is the tax benefit. Okay, that's correct. If you want, you could write down tax benefit equals depreciation plus multiplied by tax rate. But the answer is tax benefit. Okay? So, usually, the company uses depreciation because they want to put the depreciation in the time when they make a profit. So they pay less tax. Do you have any questions? Okay then, tell me the score for each team. Okay, team A, what was their score? Hands up the score. Tell me who's correcting team A. Seven. Team B. What was the score for team B? Eight. Eight. Team C. Did you correct your own one? Did you correct your own one? Or did you give it to another team? Did you correct your own work or did you give it to another team? You corrected your own one? Zero. Okay, team C? Seven and a half. Okay, team D? Seven. Team E? What was your score? Your F, yes, what was your score? Eight. What? Eight. Eight. Team E. What was the score for Team E? Team E, hello, what was the score? Seven. Team G. Team G. Hmm? What was the score for Team G? One. Team H. What was the score for Team H? Seven. Team I. Seven. Team J. Seven. Team K. Team K. Team L. How much for K? What? Seven. Team L. Why are you laughing? <laughs> team L, Team N? The two groups at the back, what was your score? Five for which one? Hey, L, what was your score? Hmm? This team here, what was your score? Yes, you guys at the back up to, what about Team L? Six. So then let's start the next round. 
And all teams got seven. Did you all get the same question wrong? Okay, so the next round. Uh, how does an increase in working capital affect cash flows? First question. Question nine. So give back page to the team. Next question. How does an increase in working capital affect cash flow? So the team which wins the quiz, they can get some prize from the shop. The end of the class. So if I increase my working capital, how does this affect my cash flow? Does it increase my cash flow or decrease my cash flow? So the answer is just increase or decrease. Okay, question number 10. What is a sunk cost? I gave an example. What is a sunk cost? I give an example. number 11 is going to be a longer question. For question number 11 we're going to take four, four minutes. It's calculating, calculating the return. Should we take a project or not? So the question is look at the following investment and say if the project should be taken or not. The cost of capital is 10%. In year zero, we have a cash outflow of 2,000. Okay, can you read this, 2,000? Year one, we also make cash outflow, a loss of minus 50. Year two, we make a profit of 900. Year three, we make a profit of 1,000. There's a salvage value at the end. When we sell our equipment, which was worth 2,000 in year zero, in the end it's worth just 30%, right? So we just get back 700 at the end of the project. So the cost of capital is 10%. So you need to tell me, what is the NPV? What is the net present value of these cash flows? And should I take the project or not? So let's take four minutes for this one. Okay. <coughs> so find the net present value of the cash flows. And say whether the project should be taken or not. Minus 2,000, year 0, minus 50, year 1, 900, year 2, 1,000, year 3.
If you're not finished this question, one person can continue to work on this question, right? The other people can move on. Question 12. If our core value of equity is 4,000 and our profit last year was 1,000, what is our return on equity? Of 
we looked at the benefits and the cost of debt. We were talking about the financing mix. What's the best financing mix to have? What are two benefits of using debt? What are two costs of using debt? So this is the last question in this round. Then we'll correct the answers. And if we have a tie, we'll have to have some tiebreaker question. Pass our page to another team. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time up. Swap your page with another team. We are going to start correcting, correcting the answers. Okay, so this time we have uh, five points. How does an increase in working capital affect cash flows? An increase in working capital reduces the cash flow, decreases the cash flow. We need more cash, we use up more cash for our stock, for our working capital. So we are going to have less cash at the end of the year. What is the sub cost in a given example? Okay, this is official way, but you can say your, in your own words, any expenditure that has already been incurred, so any cash flow that we already spent, and we can't recover, even if the project is rejected. Okay? An example is R&D for a drug, or a test market for consumer product, or paying for planning for the construction, right? Trying to get some permits that kind of expense. So a lot of examples could be used here. Uh, this one, we use the simple cash flow equation. So the cash flow at time n over 1 plus the interest rate to the power of n. So the first one is minus 2000, it's year 0. Year 1, <coughs> minus 50 over 1.1 is uh, minus 45. Uh, there's a slight mistake here, this should say minus 45. Uh, plus 743, plus 122.7. So the answer should be minus 24 here. And don't take the project. Or minus 24.5, right? Sorry, this should say 45, not 55. Okay? 50 over 1.1 is lower than 50. So don't take the project. Minus 24. Question 12. Just net income over the book value of equity is 25%. Okay? Profit is net income. 1 over 4, 25%. The last question. Tax benefit of debt, just like depreciation, we can get a tax benefit. And as discipline to management. Cost of debt, uh, loss of flexibility is the main one when we have a lot of debt in our company. Bankruptcy cost. Our company is more likely to go bankrupt if we have more debt. Okay? Agency cost between the stockholder and the bondholder. So then count the score for the team. Let's calculate the answers and see if we have a 
tie, we need to ask a tie question. Or just the winning team. So team A, how many points? Four. Four points. Team B? Five. Team B? Team B? Five. Five. Team C? Five. Five. Team D? Five. Five. Team E? Two, two. Two, team F? Five. 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 Team G? <laughs> Four. Uh, team H? Team I? Four. Team J? Team K? Four. Team L? Team L? Team M? Two, team M. Okay, we can see that anyway, the winner is team F. Okay, so well done to team F. They got the full points. So where is team F? You three guys. So you can uh, you can collect your prize at the end of the class. So uh, do you have any question then about the test on Friday? Yes? Yes, you can, you're not allowed to use your phone in this case. So you can bring buy a calculator across Ocean One. If you order online today, it might arrive at your house by Friday. <laughs> if you go to the main gate, you can buy a calculator at the shop. Yes. How about your laptop? Yes, but no internet connection on your laptop. Just uh, you have to make like airplane mode or something. Your laptop what well, else? Because somebody told me you can use Taco Talk on the on the laptop. Connect with other students. So laptop with no internet. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So then just uh, I want at the during the exam time some people might leave earlier. So just I want to say well done for studying the course through English. The financial management is a challenging topic. So you have to push yourself to study through English. Okay? So uh, well done for doing that. So then uh, <laughs> if you have any question about your grade or anything like that, you can send me an email. Okay? On Friday I should have your uh, Final data reports, all of them, so you can see your score, right? But if you have any other questions, you can send me an email and meet me sometime in my office, or you can call me. Okay, so let's finish there for today. So this review is on the, the chriscunningham.com webpage. When you go to financial management, it's the first, you can see the file, it's on the home page of financial management.
can use a multi or So you can use, do you have a dictionary, paper dictionary, or electronic dictionary? I know, I prefer that the student can use the internet, but some student might use the internet for cheating, so other students complain about that. So we can't use the internet. Paper dictionary is okay. Paper dictionary or electronic dictionary is okay. If you have a high fixed cost, it means that you can't change your costs. So, for example, I have a pizza restaurant. And I buy a car for delivery, but my business goes very badly, so I, actually I don't need my car. So I still have to pay all the money for the car, right? But uh, 